Hey everybody, it's Skomladex and welcome back to some more Magic Arena. Today I'll be playing another quick draft of Innistrad Crimson Vow. This is the only non-Baldur's Gate limited format on Arena until August, so we're going to be sprinkling these in between the plethora of Baldur's Gate drafts and sealed events coming up with the Arena Open, the Qualifier plans, all that kind of stuff. So without further ado, let's check out our first pack, see what we want to pick one here. Not a huge fan of this rare, Sigarda's Summons. This card's only going to work in plus one, plus one counter strategies, which are only in green-white in this format, which is one of the weakest color pairs, plus it's not the most consistent of plus one, plus one counter strategies. Training is the mechanic to get plus one, plus one counters on your creatures, and you need a creature with training and a creature that's bigger than it to attack alongside it to get those counters. So there's just not a lot of really great ways to use the Sigarda Summons to justify the six mana mana cost. Even if you do have kind of the training deck you do need the, some things to go right for you you need to be getting those training attacks off and you need to be able to play a six mana card that doesn't add any more creatures to your board um, without falling behind so not a huge fan of cigar to summons pretty massive fan of both of these multicolored uncommons here and they're probably what i'm going to take there's child of the pack for green red or markov purifier for white black and i think i'm going to go for markov purifier here it's actually just really easy in this format to try to trigger this life gain ability one of white's best Best commons in the format is the Traveling Minister, which taps to gain a life and give a creature plus one power each turn. That's an incredibly consistent way to get this off without even having to hit anything. You don't even need a lifelinker for that. Plus, this format has tons of lifelinkers to draw the cards off of as well. Obviously, the Purifier itself, but there's also Kindly Ancestor in white at common. That's a very good card. And Heron of Hope, another white common with lifelink. That's a very good card. Just a lot of really consistent ways to trigger this and get some nice card draw off of it. Outside of the fact that it's a pretty good stat line for its mana cost, so huge fan of the Purifier. Child of the Pack is also pretty good, and it's less of a build around, but it's just less of a massive payoff in my opinion, because you need to be kind of out of things to do for 4 mana for 2-2 two, two to be a good rate. So I'm going to go for the Markov Purifier here, see what we get past in pick 2. All right, pick two here, we have some pretty nice uncommons again. Diver Scab being a great card if you have the creatures you could exploit towards this, putting an opposing creature on top or bottom of library. And Infestation Expert just being a lot of power and toughness for the cost and really good attack trigger, especially good at night. Like both of these uncommons quite a bit, but neither of them is going to fit with our Markov Purifier that is forcing us into a white-black life gain deck. That is the biggest downside to our first pick, was it is also kind of a narrow card just for a specific color pair luckily for us we do have a pretty great white common here the drog skull infantry a two mana two two that can disturb for four to turn into a four mana aura that gives plus two plus two from your grave pretty big fan of all of the uh disturb cards and drog skull infantry is no different it's just a pretty solid card to slap in your deck so we could take the infantry here or we could take one of these two uncommons i think any of those picks are super fine uh, nothing else in the common slot that great chill of the grave is solid voldaren epicure is solid but uh, if we're going to take one of the solid commons, we're going to take the on-color one. Otherwise, if we're already going to be taking something off-color, we might as well take one of the great uh, uncommons here. But I'm just going to stick to our purifier for now, go for Drogskull Infantry. I don't think either of these are a massive draw above the Drogskull Infantry for me. Here in pick three, there's nothing massively powerful. There are a bunch of pretty great commons. The best common is Flame Blessed Bolt here. Just the best cheap removal red gets in this format, being able to exile is pretty great. Next best cards, we've got like Syncopate here, which is pretty great. Uh, counter spell that gets to exile, and Falcon Wrath Celebrants is huge late game. And then also, probably a little bit behind those two cards is Pointed Discussion. This is a really nice card draw spell, it's a little better than it looks. It's basically three mana to draw two cards and lose two life, but with that blood token giving you another discard plus draw. It's basically like you can play it as a four mana, draw three, discard one, and drawing three cards off of just one card is pretty big, even if you have to discard a card somewhere in there. So I do like Pointed Discussion quite a bit. I do like it enough to, to take it over the off-color cards, but Flame Blessed Bolt is tempting to me. Uh, Celebrant, Syncopate, um, and Weaver of Blossoms are all pretty solid too, but they're not that much better than Pointed Discussion. I do think Flame Blessed Bolt is a solid bit better than it, but again... Not quite the level of pulling me away from white black right now, so I'm going to scoop up the point of discussion here. And if we're going to keep getting past uh, packs like that, where there's just already somehow 
pick two, pick three, no more white and black cards. I guess we'll just start having to uh, jump onto these solid off-color uh, off color cards, like maybe take a diver scab here. Really unfortunate, because if you don't see any cards in your color, any great cards in your colors in pack two or pick three, it doesn't even mean you're getting cut, it just means you're not opening on-color cards, so we might start getting past great white-black stuff. Pick five, pick six, that would be weird, but um, we'll take a Diver Scab here. Seeing a Diver Scab pick four is a decent enough sign for blue. Uh, Doom to center, if we wanted to just keep what we're doing and taking okay on color cards, I could take Doom to center, but if I'm just going to get past a bunch of pretty great off-color ones, then I'm going to start trying to jump into that. And here's where things get really awkward. Bot drafts are really hard to read sometimes. This is actually kind of ridiculous um, to see very filler white black stuff until pick five and then see the best white black uncommon in the set and it's in a pack with flame blessed bolt the best red common in the set and bramble worm an incredible green uncommon so lord knows what these bots are drafting who knows what's definitely open here this is the problem with quick drafts i do wish that they would have two premier draft formats up at all times so we could do premier drafts of crimson vow when i don't want to play Baldur's gate but it is what it is i'm scooping up markov purifier when we have one markov purifier the second one is just going to be even better makes the deck a lot more consistent makes every life gain card we pick up pretty incredible and if this is getting past pick five that means theoretically the four bots that passed it should not be the black white life gain deck so we should get some of the cards for that strategy even if we haven't so far again you could take a flame bless bolt or bramble worm here and try to hop onto those signals but i've just decided i can't read bots at all apparently uh because now this pack there's not much in white or black immediately the white black has dried up voldaren epicure is probably the best card in this pack Blood Hypnotist is solid too if you're a very aggressive deck with a lot of blood tokens. Um, and then Eswald Shield Basher, Vampire Slayer, or Unholy Efficient, they're all filler creatures. They'll make the cut if we don't have enough creatures, but none of them will be all that exciting. The way our curve looks here, and the kind of cards we'd want with Markov Purifier tend to be pretty cheap on the curve, cards like Traveling Minister. Um, so I think I want to just take a filler 4-drop here if I take something filler. There's also a kind of filler little resurrection trick, but I'd rather just take a Shield Basher, I guess. I'm not really happy about that pack. This pack is just pretty bad for everybody. Yeah, no real signals here. It's just not a good pack, so we'll take Vampire Slayer. Lampholt Raconteur is a pretty solid red card, although Nurturing Presence is a lot better than it looks. You're paying two mana to get a 1-1 flyer, and with the enchantment, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, the enchanted creature gets plus one plus one. So the turn you play it, you get a 1-1 flyer. Give a creature plus one plus one until end of turn. And if you keep curving out well, it plays well, but not a lot of that. Uh, Cruel Witness is a solid common. I think the best card in this pack is probably the Lampholt Raconteur, but not by a lot. This card isn't like insane. Um, but yeah, these three are all competing. They're not... None of them are awful. Yeah, I guess I could take the Nurturing Presence here. Past all green, red, and blue cards here, but none of these are very good green, red, or blue cards. They're all just roll fillers. Take the blue one. Uh, best card here is Chill of the Grave. Really solid little tempo play, and we've got a little bit of blue in the deck right now. Definitely not looking for filler two drops enough to scoop up another white one here. We'll take this Shrill of the Grave. Best card in this pack is Syncopate. Well, we've got a backup kind of blue pile of stuff if we really get cut off of white-black, which sort of looks like it. We have pretty much three non-filler cards. I guess Nurturing Presence counts, but these two are very filler. Not a huge fan of how things are going here. It feels very similar to my last quick draft, where it's just like... I just can't read the bots. They're so weird. And now here we are in pack two. Pick one. This looks like a pretty easy pick for me. There's a courier bat here, which is perfect for the black-white life gain deck. Getting a better version of Gravedigger is insane. So a three mana, two, two flyer. If you gained life when it enters the battlefield, you return a creature from grave to hand, which should be somewhat consistent if we can get the life gain cards for it, and it'll be very powerful. Pack's pretty weak, too. None of these uncommons are, like, the greatest. Catgeist and Statuette are fine. 
Um, and then the commons are all kind of whatever as well. Blood Petal Celebrants, Spore Crawler, probably the best non-Courier Bat commons, except for maybe like a Weaver. Yeah, not really unhappy about what I'm passing there. I'm pretty solid just taking one of the black-white commons. And here's an excellent common for this strategy, Gluttonous Guest. This is a 3-mana 1-4 vampire that enters the battlefield with a blood token, and when you sacrifice a blood token, you gain a life. Really great way to trigger your cards like Markov, Purifier, and Courier Bat, which is really what the color pro wants to do. We would love to wield Draugr Skull Infantry, but that's not very likely. Uh, same with Foreboding Statue, that would fit in here fine, because it fits into pretty much anything. Um, but those are kind of the only cards that we want outside of these two, so gotta be a little hopeful on the wheel here, but it's definitely Gluttonous Guest. Now we get an on-color mythic rare, but I don't think this one is good. Creatures you control gain death touch line of turn, put a plus one plus one counter on up to one creature token you control. The minus two ability lets you double the creature tokens you create this turn. The minus six lets you exile all graveyards, create that many one ones. Seems really bad and limited. Don't think Kaya gets there. Yeah. We don't have any creature token production, and I don't think there's a lot of creature token production in the set, so I really just don't think Kaya gets there. That being said, if we're definitely playing black-white here, we're just taking a filler card like a Mind Leech Ghoul, Undying Malice, Ceremonial Knife here, so I mean, I might as well just take the Kaya. I don't think she'll make the cut, but she will get added to my collection because I only have one copy of her. If you ever want a rare draft, just hold down the Alt key, and that will bring up those numbers. Trapped on this plane. They don't deserve this. Here we go. These are the cards we're looking for for this deck. Beautiful, beautiful pack. We have no removal yet, so I feel like I should probably take something like Parasitic Grasp or Sigarda's Imprisonment. They're both removal spells. Sigarda's Imprisonment makes it so anything can't attack or block, whereas Parasitic Grasp is just dealing three damage, but you're gaining life when you cast this, so that could trigger your Purifier, your Courier Bat, any of that stuff while you're using a removal spell. Diagraph Scavenger is also excellent in the black white. Um, life gain deck because you get to exile a card from your opponent's graveyard drain your opponent for a couple life to trigger life gain kindly ancestor also phenomenal for the pack sad thing about this pack is we would really love all four of these cards so we would have much rather had these divided amongst the next four picks and then we could just have all of them in our deck but if this is how it's going to be it's how it's going to be we have to pick just one here with no removal in the deck yet um midway into pack two i think i take one of the two removal spells and Probably going to take Sigarda's Imprisonment just because it can kill creatures that are bigger than three toughness just in case, even though the grasp is so nice with our strategy. I think Imprisonment is just more flexible. Solid pick out of here. Pack two, pick five. We get to scoop up a Panicked Bystander, which gains us a life whenever one of our creatures dies. Good for the strategy. It's between that and like a grizzly ritual which is very slow removal but that's fine in this format you do want a solid amount of removal even if it is super slow because of how bomb heavy it can be um and there's like nurturing presence or evolving wilds but i'm pretty happy taking the panicked bystander here this card also potentially flips into a 3-5 if you're really in the life gain deck but you don't have to be for this to still be solid just a two mana 2-2 two -two with a solid uh, ability on the board not a massive fan of Distracting Geist. It's probably one of my least favorite Disturbed Creatures because it's a very narrow one, only being good when you're on the aggressive. That being said, it is pretty great when you're on the aggressive, but 3 mana for 2 ones a really, really expensive cost for just trying to like block with, and then, of course, the aura in your grave isn't going to help you survive at all. So not a big fan of Distracting Geist. Um, and then there's just a filler card like Mind Leech Ghoul, Militia Rally, or so I'm probably just going to take Evolving Wilds here, help the mana base a little bit, be a little... A little more consistent here. Not in love with this pack. Cards are all pretty bad for everybody again. I'll just take another Nurturing Presence, I guess. Um, well, Wolf Strike is the best card in the pack. Spore Crawler is also pretty good, and Siphon Essence, but we're pretty committed at this point. That being said, Supernatural Rescue is not a card we're going to play at all. So, I suppose we take a blue card because we've got enough blue for that to potentially get flipped into. Um... Weaver Blossoms is by far the best card here. Monstrosity is fine. I'm not going to play a trainee. Very much not a fan of that card. Again, because it's only good in the specific situation where you get to attack in with that alongside another creature. There's a lot of times where it's just way too slow to be good. 
green is pretty much an impossibility here. We're not going to end up green, so we might as well take the big dreadlight monstrosity just in case we're in blue. It is worse than that ramp dork out of the green cards there, but uh, it's more likely to get played in our deck because we could get pushed into like blue white or something weird. We see a pick 10 Drog Skull infantry, which is again making me feel that this might not even be that the bots are drafting the same colors as us. It could just be that the packs just don't have the cards we need, which does happen. Yeah, Kindly Ancestor pick 12, it straight up just is that. I mean, obviously somebody took the Parasitic Grasp, somebody took the... Uh, what else was good for our deck? The Diagraph Scavenger. So somebody's taking the good black cards, but Kindly Ancestor super late, Droxkill Infantry super late, and the other thing that we have to think is like... Those other cards could have gone super, super late as well, because we're down to only three cards left in this pack. There could have been a Parasitic, Parasitic Grasp or Diagraph Scavenger in here literally one pick ago, and that's still incredibly late for those cards. So take a Kindly Ancestor, take a third Nurturing Presence, and hopefully open up some great on-color stuff, because we can't get past it for our life, and we've opened up poop. Not complete poop, I'll take a Grizzly Ritual here, but... These last two Crimson Vow quick drafts have been pretty abysmal feeling during the drafting process. Well, Grizzly Ritual is going to be the top end of our curve here. We have nothing but two and three mana cards, which is kind of funny. Uh, but yeah, I'll take a Grizzly Ritual. We're just not going to get enough removal. We'll have to play the pretty slow removal there. But those blood tokens on the Grizzly Ritual are very valuable because by the time you're casting this, you have six mana. So your seventh land is definitely redundant. So you can definitely just use those blood tokens as soon as you draw another land. So I do like Grizzly Ritual. Heron Blessed Guy is probably the next best card here, but I'll take a Grizzly Ritual. There we go. There's some removal that I'm very happy with. A bleed dry at instant speed, giving minus 13, minus 13. More than big enough to kill pretty much anything, and it's exiling it so your opponent can't recur it from the graveyard. Valorous Stance is solid as well, but bleed dry is just more flexible. Scoop that up. Here we go. This is what I'm talking about. Let's just get there in this final pack, shall we? We see another Kindly Ancestor, and with the double Markov Purifier and one Courier Bat in this deck, really want to go after that life gain thing, so I'm going to take Kindly Ancestor here. There are other great cards. Rot Tide Gargantua and Point of Discussion seem like the best to me. Wedding Security is good if you can have a ton of blood tokens. I don't think we have enough for that. Um, but yeah, really happy to take Kindly Ancestor. And I'm happy to scoop up as many as I can get, but we do see a Diagraph Scavenger in the same pack, another excellent common, even for the life gain deck, and this one uh, stops your opponent from recurring. I'd rather take my first Diagraph Scavenger than my third Kindly Ancestor, and I'll happily take that here. I'm so happy with this last pack. This is just, this is the heartwarming pack right here. Everything was falling apart and crumbling below my, my very feet, and then... You know, somebody just lit up the fireplace, brought me a nice hot mug of cocoa, everything's chill, we've got our safety blanket on. This last pack has solved absolutely everything, and now we see a really late Blood Craze Socialite, great, great beat stick to try to end the game with. A 3-3 Menace by itself, but you can also sacrifice Blood Tokens to make it a 5-5 Menace on attacks, really closes out those games. Definitely the kind of card we're looking for here with so many 2s and 3s. Excellent pickup here, the Blood Craze Socialite. And now, pick seven, it's all going to dry up. But that's okay, because we're very close to having a full deck. We need four more cards to get added to here. So we're going to have to play a little bit of filler. We'll play our Mind Leech Ghoul. We might try out our Kaya or our Estwald Shield Basher. But our deck is going to be fine. We're going to be fine. Uh, it's all good. I'm just going to take a high rarity card now to fill the vaults. Super happy with how this last pack has ended for us. Pretty good stuff. And again, yeah, it's all just dry now, so... I guess we could go for a blue splash if we really need to, but pick 11 point of discussion. Super happy with that, and that can go right into this deck. And that's the deck, 23 cards. We just throw in our basic lands. Didn't get enough last pick syncopate. Um, didn't get enough uh, on-color cards to really have any decision-making in the deck-building process here. I guess there's one Vampire Slayer, and we could put an A Ceremonial Knife, but it's not a great card. Put an Evolving Wilds. 
probably just going to do that. Cut one card out of this deck. 15 creatures, 9 non-creatures. It should be one non-creature card that we cut. Definitely could see Kaya being the cut here. This is a Planeswalker that's literally just going to come out and do nothing but give our creatures death touch each turn. So a 3-man enchantment that gives your board death touch, that just seems terrible to me. I'm going to cut Kaya here. And then uh, we've got a deck. And uh, I guess we can count the nurtured presence as uh, nurturing presences as creatures, because they're all spitting out a spirit token. And I guess those are all spirit tokens, so they could work with Kaya. You know what? This is probably a dumb idea, but I didn't think of our nurturing presence. That's three creature tokens in our deck. So we have a Planeswalker that only works with three cards in our entire deck. All right, I've once again changed my mind. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to cut Kaya again. And then this is just the deck, a white-black life gain deck. Should be a fun time here. I think very similar to our last draft. Things were just kind of all over the place during the draft pod. The bots just do weird things. Just see a bunch of good off-color cards passed, but also see good on-color cards passed later on. So it just feels like the first couple packs were just dry of good white-black life gain cards. Um, yeah. Weird, weird draft again. I just hope maybe for the third draft of my return to Innistrad Crimson Vow Quick Drafts we'll have a very standard, very regular looking draft and not one of these where just everything is getting passed and nothing is getting passed at the same time. I don't know. We'll see how things go as we move into the gameplay. Here we are in game one with our black white life gain deck. Super happy with this hand. We can start throwing nurturing presences onto our kindly ancestor, get bigger life gain swings out. Bigger lifelink swings. Opponent goes for the turn one Evolving Wilds. And there's our Evolving Wilds. So we're just going to play our infantry for now, though. Probably play that Evolving Wilds on turn four so we can curve all our creatures out onto the board. Start hitting our opponent before they get anything too big. Opponent grabs an island off of the Evolving Wilds into a mountain, so a blue-red deck here. Pretty great deck in the format. Flame Blessed Bolt is a common they could very well have that is very good against our Drog Skull Infantry, because it's enough damage to kill it and exile it from Grave. Looks like none of that, though. They'll just play a Blood Petal Celebrant. How badly do I want to attack this turn? I want to attack pretty badly. I think I want to attack badly enough to go for Nurturing Presence over Kindly Ancestor here, just to make Infantry a 3-3. To attack past the celebrant and then we'll just pop our evolving wilds this turn instead of next turn right, opponent was considering maybe popping the celebrant for their blood token immediately it looks like but decided not to Straight to combat, attack with a 2-1. That has first strike during their turn. So we're definitely not blocking with the spirit there. Turn 4 for us, and our opponent's played one card so far. Definitely want to play my creatures pre-combat here, and I would rather play more creatures to just get more immediate damage and bash in as quickly as possible. So I'll cast Panic Bystander and Vampire Slayer here, I think. I guess it could be more damage if I just jammed out a Nurturing Presence on the infantry or the spirit, and played another creature. But I'm worried about removal, yeah, like that. And if I cast a Nurturing Presence and they blow it up before it resolves, I will not get a spirit token because it won't enter the battlefield. So this way I saved my Nurturing Presence from getting abraded and getting two for one. So I think I'll do it now that they're tapped out on the spirit so we get in for more damage this turn as well as being able to use the future triggers for more damage when we play creatures. This is nice. This is pretty much my first time using multiple Nurturing Presences, and this is where they do play really well. So... Pretty happy with how they've been so far. Perfectly solid. I'm gonna go ahead and drop a couple creatures out for our Nurturing Presence to pop off again. 
And again, with three open mana from the blue red deck, don't really want to try to slap this onto something and have it get abraded or flame bless bolted in response to my aura. Because then they kill my creature and my aura. Opponent might be deciding whether or not they want to counter this kindly ancestor with the three mana counter spell that lets them get a blood token. Looks like a no. How about the Vampire Slayer, the worst card? Okay, they will counter that one, and the reason they were holding so long is because they had the counter spell, but they didn't have the mana to counter Ancestor because they would have needed a blue and three since we had two mana up after trying to cast Ancestor, so pretty lucky their counter spell was Syncopate instead of the three mana one there. All right, opponents tapped out now. Uh, obviously, Ballista Watcher is going to be annoying for us, but we can just buff... There's a stupid fly in my face. Okay, sorry. Um, we can just buff one of our spirits out of range of that, then they can only kill one of our creatures with it. Yeah, I think I want to do that rather than play Purifier this turn. I guess I could infantry the Ancestor so we have something to keep getting Purifier value off of. But I just want to hit hard, close out this game more quickly. Get our best flyer out of range of that removal creature. The pinger. Cool witness is the play, just another creature here. Tapped out from using their removal creature, now the Ballista Watcher. Tempted to bleed dry the Ballista Watcher, but we'll just kill them faster if we bleed dry the Cruel Witness. We'll hit for four, put them down to two life, and then if they can't kill the spirit again next turn, they're just straight up dead. Don't get any more damage by attacking with this with these two. This just trades there, this trades. This dies there, doesn't even trade. Opponent's just gonna scoop them up. A bit stuck on mana for them, just four mana all game, but pretty happy with uh but that game overall for us. 1-0. Alright, here we are in game two. Starting off with a Mind Leech Ghoul into a Gluttonous Guest into a Blood Crazed Socialite. Solid 2-3-4 curve, but our opponent's on the play, so it shouldn't hit them that hard. Although we'll see soon enough. Might have to use the curve just to block theirs. Yep. Control the Grave is a great tempo play here. Let's us lets them hit us more, draws them a card. They're gonna ramp down a persistent specimen this turn. We'll drop our gluttonous guest, a very good blocker, and we get a blood token. And every time we're using blood tokens, we're gaining life now. Opponent's got a Blood Fountain set up so they can get some Graveyard Recursion if they put anything in there with that Scattered Thoughts. Or if any of their creatures die here, but Persistent Specimen brings itself back. There's two lands in the Graveyard, so they just took a couple non-land cards there most likely. Hit a Markov Purifier. I would just rather curve out with the 4-drop Blood Craze Socialite. And the Purifier could lead into a... Um, a turn five where I get to spend three mana on the purifier, then attack with the socialite, sacrifice a blood to its effect. Because I sacrificed a blood, I'd have gained a life, and then I can just draw a card in the end step there. That being said, five mana up from the blue black deck after they just used the scattered thoughts and put two lands in their graveyard is incredibly suspect. They're definitely holding up instant speed interaction and would much rather. My kindly ancestor or blood crazed socialite get killed, then my Markov purifier. I think the best line is to just attack with the blood crazed socialite here. Pop the blood with it. That way we'll have gained a life, so if they then go to spend four mana and bleed dry on this card, we'll know that they don't have a counter spell, or four mana to lunar rejection it. That's actually even better for us. So we know they don't have a counter spell because they only have one black mana up, 
So now we can just play the Purifier, draw the card off of it to get as much value as possible. Could be a little greedy because we might want to just stay as aggressive as possible, but I think I'd rather get the Markov Purifier on the board on lock with this Gluttonous Guest down alongside it and a Kindly Ancestor in hand. If we can get a Markov Purifier active, it's going to win us the game. Ooh, and we draw a second Purifier if they manage to kill the first one. Six mana up now from our opponent. Opponent's got a lot of card draw going on here. Point of discussion after an early Scattered Thoughts, plus their interaction, Lunar Rejection and Chill of the Grave both draw a card when they cast those as well. Blood Token discarding a land. Seems like they've drawn a lot of lands here, but that makes sense. They've drawn a lot of cards, period. They're already more than halfway through their deck. This freaking fly is back. Okay, so six mana available. I'm going to do combat before anything else, but I don't really want to attack with any of these cards. I guess I could attack with Mind Leech Ghoul and that'd be fine, because it could get their Ghoul off the board without losing anything important. So we'll do that first. Then I think... I guess I could have Nurturing Presence, the Markov Purifier, to try to get aggressive there, make sure it gets in, but... Don't want to put it in any danger at all. Just going to let Mind Leech Ghoul in. Pretty cool. Two mana up from our opponent. Could be a Syncopate for one, but it can't be any other counterspell I can think of. So we can actually just drop another Purifier immediately. Probably not worth it, though, when we have a Blood Craze Socialite. We're probably just supposed to just slam down Socialite. How bad is it if our Drog Skull Infantry gets countered? Yeah, I'm going to not get syncopated for one. They might not even have the syncopate, but the infantry is not really going to add too much more to our board state anyway. And infantry is pretty good in our hand because we can discard it to a gluttonous guest and we still have the aura half of it in our graveyard. And of course, if we discard it and gain a life with it, that will trigger both Markov purifiers, so... If we have seven mana, we spend three on a Purifier. And then four to draw a card off of both of them. I guess we need eight mana because one to use the blood token. So Arch School of Thraben is down. Whenever a zombie they control dies, go to the top card of the library. If it's a zombie, put it in the hand. If not, they may put it into the grave. Okay. Board state is getting very annoying. It's probably about time to just Nurturing Presence to get a flyer. And I'll put it on the Purifier. Be fine on a Blood Craze Socialite too. But on Purifier I might actually be able to get a lifelink swing in. I guess not. Yeah, no. That was greedy. I should have just put it on the socialite. So I don't think I'm attacking with purifier here no matter what I do. Get kindly Ancestor first. It's a 4-5 now. They kill it with these two, and I only kill one of their creatures. Could make it a 5-6 and then I'd kill both. You know what, I have a backup here for, let's just go. All right, they don't have a syncopate. I've got a backup here for, let's just jam. Snap trade there. They do have the blood found to get those back, but that's gonna soak up a lot of their mana. Bioloom Egg, very good with exploit. If they sacrifice that, they get a 4-4 that they can potentially give unblockable. We're going to scry one at the top and one at the bottom when they play it. And they're going to pass the turn. Now they have four mana up, though, so they could just counter our Markov Purifier, but we have two Courier Bats in this deck we can draw into. I suppose this is another combat 
another turn where I want to do combat first and see if we pull a removal out of their hand. Trade Kindly Ancestor for Mind Leech Ghoul? I'm actually okay with that trade. Absolutely, I'd, I'd trade Kindly Ancestor for Mind Leech Ghoul, because then we get to put the Ancestor's Embrace onto a um, flyer or something. Okay, so they are going to blow up the Blood Craze Socialite. Can't do anything about that. We are going to decline to sacrifice a blood to that, and instead sacrifice a blood to discard a card, draw a card. Because if we sacrifice a blood to Socialite, it's already in the grave, it's not going to change anything. Very solid trade there, just our Disturb creature. Hit them for three. I guess we gained life with Ancestor, I don't have to crack a blood here. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, I'll just save the blood. Potentially for later. Ooh, Courier Bat, that's what I was talking about, excellent draw. Here's a Stitched Assistant for our opponent. Sacrificing the 0-4 to bring it back as a 4-4. We're just going to be jamming in the sky here. Probably drop a Drog Skull Infantry onto this flyer. So we can't do much about the 4-4 on the ground. I guess we could throw Infantry onto Kindly Ancestor instead so we can keep attacking with that to trigger Markov Purifier's card draw. I think I would rather just be drawing cards as I'm using Blood Tokens for the Gluttonous Guest. Just making sure I'm getting damage in here. So we pre-combat this infantry if we can. All right, are we hitting for three in the sky here? Or is this getting blown up by something? It's gonna get tapped down by Chill of the Grave, annoying. So because I dumped the mana into casting an aura, I have to choose if it's more relevant to get a guaranteed creature back from Grave, or if it's more relevant to just draw off the top, and it's probably better to get a creature out of Grave, especially because I'm adding another flyer to the board. So we're going to crack a blood token discarding this swamp. We'll gain a life off of Gluttonous Guest. I guess if they have Syncopate, it's better to just draw off of Markov Purifier, but they didn't have it before. If they have it here, at least we're getting it out of the way, so Sigarda's Imprisonment can lock down their 4-4, and we can get attacking with our two power creatures on the ground again. All right, no syncopate. We get to bring back our Blood Craze Socialite or our Markov Purifier. We've got one Markov Purifier active and had a solid amount of value even without it. So I think I'm cool to take the Socialite, just get another big semi-truck to run them over with. Sky Warp Scab. Well... We might have to imprison that instead of the serpent then, so we can just keep hitting in the sky. Desperate farmer. That could definitely slow out slow down our beat down, because it could gain them some life. Ooh, bleed dry, so we have removal for both creatures. I think I'm gonna hold on to the bleed dry. Just imprison the flyer for now. We have enough blockers on the ground to just trade into the farmer if it tries to get anything done. And that is it for the attacks. Drop that socialite while they're tapped out and pass the turn. Have both of our flyers untapped next turn. Alright, sorry for that little bit of silence, and apologies to my opponent there. I got the fly. Just, I hate it so much when just like one single fly somehow 
gets into your room and it's just one lone fly and you know it's in there but you only see it once per day it's gone now all right so they have no flying blockers this next nurturing presence is going to be pretty good on one of our flyers i'd like to just jam that down put it on the smaller flyer so we don't have all our eggs in one basket Attack with both of the flyers, attack with a 5-5 Blood Craze Socialite, hold up a Bleed Dry to ruin whatever double block they go for on the Socialite. And then even after casting the Bleed Dry, we'll still have the mana up to draw an additional card off of Markov Purifier in the end step. Seems like a pretty phenomenal turn here for us. Right, Bioloom Serpent and the Persistent Specimen. Time to see if we get countered here or if we get to keep our Blood Craze Socialite. Gonna try to exile that specimen because the Socialite's big enough to beat a Bioloom Serpent. This leaves us open to still losing to a combat trick, but... They're blue-black, so they probably aren't playing combat tricks. They do play a Holebreaker Horror, one of the biggest bombs in the set. It is a pretty disastrous card. Especially for us right now, because we have multiple creature tokens on the board, so every time they cast a spell, they get to return a permanent or spell to its owner's hand. That is about the worst thing they possibly could have had for us, to have popped our bleed dry early. We might just lose because of it. Yeah, I'm playing, I'm playing too aggressively for this format. I... Been long enough since I've seen a Mega Bomb that's completely unbeatable that uh, I just kept playing by basic limited principles of keeping the pressure on so your opponent has less time to draw into something, and probably not what you do in this format when cards like Holebreaker Horror exist. And completely flip the game on its head, and there's basically no way out now. I mean, they are at 8 life still, but we don't have more removal to draw. We have Grizzly Ritual, but every single instant in their deck is now a, a temporary counterspell, and they have a boatload of instants. Okay, I mean, it's not completely over. Everything's just in our hand. We can keep spreading things onto the field and get things back from our Grey with Courier Bat. So we Diagraph Scavenger here. Drain them for a little bit of life. Get rid of an Arch Ghoul from their Grave. Now we've gained life, so we get to play Courier Bat, pick a creature up. It's probably what we want to keep doing is just trying to loop Courier Bat. They can keep bouncing it as much as they want, but every time they bounce it, we just get a creature back from Grave, and eventually we get through. They do only have seven cards left in Library, and we know they have no creatures in Grave for this Blood Fountain. Maybe we mill here, because we're at a very high life total. Okay, so I mean, Holebreaker Horror did blow up most of our aggressive board state. Now it's going to finish it all off with this repository scab. But we have other ways to win this game. Pick up the Courier Bat. Exploit the repository scab, sacrificing a creature to... Bring an instant or sorcery back from their grave to hand. Six life now. They're going to bring a Parasitic Grasp back so they can blow up another creature and bounce another creature. So now they can kill our Purifier or our Scavenger and bounce our Spirit Token. So again, we have zero action here. And they're going to Blood Fountain for... Skywarp Scab and Biolumic. I was wrong, they have multiple creatures in Grave. They just have so much stuff in Grave, I saw a million instants and sorceries and was like, there's no creatures in there. There's like 50 instants and sorceries. Well, they don't have the mana for anything here. They can only Parasitic Grasp on a human. There are any humans on the board. They have a human, so if they need to bounce one of our cards, they can shoot their own human, but that's all they can do here. 
So we attack with Diagraph Scavenger. So it dies and then we Courier Bat it back after using a Blood Token to drain them for more life. Or if it doesn't die, then it just hits them, or they bounce it back to our hand, and then we just recast it. Seems good. Trade for the Harvester here. As soon as that dies, there's no humans on the board anymore, which means now we know they don't have any bounce. So when we gain our life... We know we're good to go Courier Bat Diagraph Scavenger, and they have no instance to counter it. And we exile the farmer from their grave, drain them for two life in the process. I'm down to six. I'm going to keep this for the blood token from Socialite. Five cards in their library now. I don't think they're going to be able to get in a position where... They bounce like our entire board to hand. To where they can just start alpha striking us each turn. They're gonna shoot the courier bat so we can't loop it around anymore. And they bounce the spirit. So we're not hitting them anymore, so we're pretty much entirely all on the mill plan now. Right, bounce kindly ancestor. They're scrying two. I think we can do it off the mill plan here. We have a lot of life gain to stay in this game. And unless they can fully kill Scavenger, we could just trade into their Holebreaker Horror. Got another Markov Purifier, and I don't want to draw too many more cards. We'll do that, keep our Death Touch, but trade off with those. Arch Ghoul triggers, but I highly doubt they want to mill themselves right now, so yeah, they don't do anything off that, and we draw another Courier Bat. So we go Socialite use a Blood Courier Bat here. Unless they counter our Socialite, I guess. Syncopate unless I pay three. And bounce our gluttonous guest. It's annoying, but I think I just pay for it and pass. They bounce scavenger and hit us for a bit. We're still at 35. Yeah. So they play scab, bounce scavenger. Mirror Hall Mimic, Jesus Christ. For double Holebreaker Horror. Whoa, they're gonna copy Diagraph Scavenger. Okay. Sure, four cards in their deck here. No more cards in their hand. They can at max, maximum bounce one card next turn. I mean, we, we super got this. That arch ghoul, drain them some life. Courier bat, pick up our other courier bat. I guess if I picked up ghoul, I could play it right now, but. I don't know, I feel like we're probably good. Rot Tide Gargantua, we bounce a creature and sock a creature. 
Bounce scavenger, sack courier bat. We'll pick up courier bat when we play the scavenger again. They have three cards in their library. They sacrifice... Oh, they sacrifice mirror hall mimic. Oh no, they sacrifice something else. I would have thought they could sacrifice mirror hall mimic to get the disturb, but they probably don't have time to use that disturb well anyway. We're at 11. That thing unblockable. We've got Grizzly Ritual now to get rid of Holebreaker Horror, but we're at 11 life, so I think we have to play land and just drop 10 power or 10 creatures as much that gain life as possible. So Diagraph gains life immediately, and then we need to go Purify our Ancestor. Please just have like one land left in your deck to where you can't bounce something this turn so you can't attack with Holebreaker Horror. Alright, just attack with Bioloom Serpent, I suppose. Just the flyer and the serpent, it is. Okay, everything, everything, okay. Well. In four, basically at 17, take three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 17, take eleven, we're gonna be basically at six. We can kill Gargantua and Horror and be at six life. No attack with the Horror. Grizzly Sigil on my turn, I can only hit them for six though. Really don't want to kill the mirror hall mimic. So we lose one creature, kill that, lose one creature, kill that. Take eight, gain four, take four, we're at nine. They're at seven, we're at nine. They have two cards left. Set an ancestor to pick up Courier Bat, replay Diagraph Scavenger. Four, six, seven, that costs seven of our mana. We have ten, so we can do that and play one more blocker. Probably is worth it. Courier Bats, Courier Bat Scavenger is the blockers. Or Courier Bat Gluttonous Guest Scavenger. I think Courier Bat, Courier Bat Scavenger. So we can get in the sky. More. cards left for them.
I scoop them up, they are over it. That got probably closer than it should have been in the end there. We were low enough on life, I'm like, I can't really just spend six and blow up this hole breaker right now. So maybe I could have. That was super stressful. Super, super swing at the end there when they dropped the hole breaker after I blew my bleed dry. That could have went really far awry. Definitely going to try to hold my removal as much as I can future. Unless it's just like going to immediately win the game. Um, yeah, we'll see how things go as so we head into round three. Round three here. Awkward hand, we're not playing anything till turn three because we need a creature on board for nurturing presence. Do have kindly ancestor, cigars, imprisonment. Our opponent's on the play, so it gives us an opportunity to draw a two drop or a swamp. If we don't hit a swamp, it's pretty bad. This feels awkward enough to mulligan for me. This is quite a bit better because we just get to dump the nurturing presence. Well. Presence has played pretty nicely just having 1-1 one, one flyers. I might dump the imprisonment for now. Might be bold. Yeah, no, we probably just kindly ancestor and then mark off purifier after. Keep our imprisonment. We've got two more nurturing presences anyway. We might just draw into one. We really want to go for that spirit game plan again. Opponents on the play, and they're going to start with a swamp. We'll follow up with a planes. I don't want to copy them, even though I could. Black red from our opponent. You see a black red deck? It's probably vampires in this format, and you always are going to be very happy if they don't immediately play a two mana three two. Well. Still played it, but they played it on turn three. This card is absolutely nuts. Two mana for a three, two that comes with a blood token is already incredible stats, and they can use it as removal if need be. Give something minus X minus X until end of turn, where X is the number of blood tokens they control. Just gonna play Kindly Ancestor. Disturbed creatures are really nice because you're very free to just trade these off early games. So if they attack with this harvester, I'm just gonna snap trade we'll have that enchantment in our grave later. Some later game value off of it. They are not going to offer the trade, though. Don't really want to put a Markov Purifier on board while our opponent has Blood Tithe Harvester active. So I'm either going to point a discussion or imprison the Socialite. I think I would rather imprison the Socialite. I still have Grizzly Ritual as a backup removal spell. And... Red and black are incredibly good at creating blood tokens to where this is pretty much always going to attack as a 5-5 menace, which is a really big deal. Honored Heirloom is pretty annoying for our deck. They get to stop all of our Disturbed cards. They get to stop our Courier Bats as well, if they're holding the mana up to exile cards from our graveyard. So that's, that's yeah, pretty obnoxious, but... Them spending on the mana, the mana on that means they're not just like dumping out another really good creature and beating us down or anything. Gives us some breathing room. We just have to play without using our graveyard synergies. But as you can see from last game, our graveyard synergies are some of the strongest things we can do. Ooh, they are tapped out. I think it's time to just get a mountain of value also opponent is three color black red and white they discarded their own kindly ancestor being a hypocrite with the honored heirloom i see uh, yeah i'm just gonna go to value town here i guess i should have played this post combat but i don't think it would affect their block here i think they're just not gonna block either way maybe it'll block though no uh, yeah and then i'll just start drawing extra cards because it looks like it's going to be a grindy one if we're... If they're going to be spending time to exile our graveyard value stuff. Let's get all of the onboard value that we can. So if they manage to produce another blood token here, they can trade their blood tithe harvester into our Markov purifier. They also could just have removal. They are red-black. Solid amount of good removal in this format in most color pairs, but definitely red-black. Got a braid and bleed dry at common. 
a Flame Blast Bolt too, but that's not big enough. Dracula the Voyager is a very big issue. Edgar Charmed Broom. Charmed Groom. <laughs> Charmed Broom, my boy. Um, yeah, no, that's a really big deal. All their vampires get plus and plus one, which is incredibly relevant in this matchup because they are red-black vampires, so their whole board's just going to be bigger. And if we ever kill it, it's just going to come back as a coffin that spits out more vampires, which will then eventually come back as Edgar. Basically, never going to leave unless we can exile it. It's going to be just a massive deal on our opponent's board. Well, no creatures in the grave to get off of Courier Bat, so we might as well just play it to start chipping in in the sky. Good point of discussion, try to get to the mana for Grizzly Ritual, but that doesn't even deal with Dracula, it just flips it into the casket of native earth. Edgar Markov's coffin. Uh, we're in a world of pain. I guess we're digging for bleed dry, so let's just start digging through our library. Hmm. Rather put another blocker on this board or just spend a blood token right now. Probably just get another blocker out. Get the infantry. Probably never going to come back from the grave, but maybe it'll at least get our opponent to soak up two of their mana to exile that from our graveyard. Which is still getting us some kind of value. Okay, imprison the kindly ancestor so we can't double block Dracula with these two. We'll go to eight life on board. All right, well, crack back with some lifelink with Markov Purifier. Still no grizzly ritual mana, nor bleed dry drawn off the top. So that is not great for us. Yeah, we're definitely attacking with Markov Purifier. I think we need to hold infantry back to chump block now. I mean, yeah, you got it. Well, up the purifier, we can't courier back because we haven't gained any life, so we can't save it from the grave. Vampire Slayer is not a horrible draw, it gets to trade with Harvester. Yeah, Gluttonous Guest and Vampire Slayer then. And we chump block Dracula with the infantry and Vampire Slayer the Blood Tithe Harvester. Take no damage next turn. And now we have the blood tokens with a gluttonous guest down to keep our courier bat active, get our Markov purifier back from grave if they don't have the mana to use their honored heirloom. It's all assuming they don't have their own interaction to stop this stuff. We'll see what they've got here. We could have the one mana minus two minus two in black to throw on Vampire Slayer. Then we're not killing anything on blocks. All right, give the Harvester lifelink, that's all cool. If I win this game, it's begun, It's going to be because I've dealt with their board state. So it'll take several swings to kill them afterwards. Anyways, we're going to need to control the whole board, regardless. Not too worried about them gaining a bunch of life. I will double block, double block that Harvester if they kill our Vampire Slayer with something here. Yep. So double block the Harvester, we'll have to do. They'll get to kill our Gluttonous Guest, but we get to start getting hit for four each turn instead of eight. 
There's only going to be one creature on board we need to find blocks for. Unless they have a two mana combat trick. Uh, of course. The splashed white combat trick. Grizzly ritual mana, but that doesn't do anything to Dracula. Doesn't do anything good enough to Dracula. Six mana, play Socialite and Mind Leech Ghoul. Socialite is big enough to block Harvester and trade. Mind Leech Ghoul can jump block Dracula. Jump block Dracula. Yeah. They don't have any cards in their hand for us to get rid of with this Mind Leech Ghoul, though. S sad. We could still have sacrificed the Ancestor, I guess, so we put it in Grave so they don't get to get a blood token off of it by popping their Imprisonment. Couldn't really, like, put it in Grave and use Ancestor's Embrace. Wow, Fellstinger's an excellent draw. They get to draw two cards now. They just drew three cards this turn. One of them is a 3-2 Death Touch. What are the other two cards they drew? The world may never know. Might just go for their combat immediately. What have you got, opponent? What secrets lie in wait? Stuff they don't want? They're using these blood tokens? Yep. One of them's a land. Highly doubt both their lands, or they wouldn't have thought that long about whether or not they wanted to use the blood token. Edgar is such a such an irritating rare because it's not an insta win one it's a very long grindy win one where it's like yeah I cut a grizzly ritual a while ago and then I'm dealing with a bunch of 1-1 vampires and it's going to come back again later it's like a just grindy kill card here just need exile removal That's not a bleed dry. I think we can finally leave this game. And play a courier bat that doesn't have lifelink. I can blow up their Dracula and take three from Felstinger and go to one. I can use blood tokens and hope for bleed dry. I can use at least one immediately. No, because I only have five mana up. So if I use one here discarding this swamp and I draw something that isn't a land or a bleed dry, I just die. You know what, I'm 100% okay with this at this point. I just want to finish this game. Give me the bleed dry, or let me leave. Let me die. Okay. I mean, I guess we still chump block Dracula at this point. Chump block with Courier Bat. Take three. It's taking just as much as if we just Grizzly Ritualed. Have I used Bleed Dry already? Have I just been losing my mind this whole game? No, I have not. Okay. Well, we're dead to removal, so... Hopefully, we get to move on to the next round, then. I 
They exile our drug skull infantry from grave when we pass turn now. Now, if we, even if we draw bleed dry, only dealing with okay. <sighs> Big ups, Dracula the Voyager! Congratulations, we're heading into round four. All right, here we are in round four. Pretty excellent hand. Pull out a planes off this evolving wilds. Drop a drog skull infantry and a purifier and a courier bat. Opponents on the play again, unfortunately. Green red deck. Green red is werewolves in this format. If they're going tribal, it could just be good green and red cards. And spore crawler definitely looks like that kind of thing. Just good green or red cards. Infantry into spore crawler is a fair trade. They draw a card, I get an aura in my grave. But they don't want to take that trade. Let's get our Markov purifier down. And in a 3 2, we'll take three. Four mana now from our opponent since they're on the play, unless they didn't draw a fourth land. Wolf Strike, that sucks. Purifier's gone. They did not draw a fourth land, though, which is something. Uh, we'll just point a discussion here. I'd like to save Courier Bat to save Purifier or something. Ooh, Gluttonous Guest and Panicked Bystander, which means Gluttonous Guest can get us that life gain for Courier Bat later. Next turn, we'll just play these two creatures. And I'll hold on to this Blood Token, I think, for now, because we have several plays for the next coming turns without needing to filter a land out of our hand to draw more plays. Well, they're winning the race here. With double spore crawler, they're definitely winning the race. But gluttonous guest alongside a panicked bystander can change that nice and fast. Uh, how cool am I with infantry trading? Pretty cool with that. Cool with it getting in for two as well. We're still at 12. We have two blockers down. Our deck is a life gain deck. Bramble armor. That makes things more threatening. Five three spore crawler now. Opponent has to make some decisions here on if they want to send in with both or just one. Don't think they just pass here. I feel like they probably attack with at least the five three. Although we could double block and they can only kill the guest. Then we don't have the life gain we need for courier bat, but our opponent doesn't know that. Okay, we're letting that in. We need gluttonous guest badly, so go down to seven. Ooh, kindly ancestor. That's a beautiful draw. Um, yeah, I might uh, not courier bat now. I guess I can courier bat infantry and still do that. That's fine. Yeah, and we can chump block with our extra drog skull infantry. We'll have plenty of other blockers for non-trumps. Okay, so we're going to Courier Bats. We need to crack a Blood Token first to pick up Markov Purifier, and then we want to keep Infantry in our hands. We have a two-mana thing to do. It's a little weird here, but I think I discard Pointed Discussion. Might be greedy. If I discard this land, I might only be able to cast Courier Bat, and I definitely want to play two blockers. Maybe I discard Kindly Ancestor and just use it to put Lifelink on something else. But Lifelink is very good here. Yeah, maybe I just put Lifelink on something else, actually. Blood Token, discard Ancestor. And then we could throw Lifelink on the bat itself. That would actually be very good. A Lifelinking Flyer. 
well, top deck to land, so we didn't have to discard an on-land card there, but we had no confirmation we were going to hit a land to be able to cast another spell. So I think it was better to just not take that risk. Just discard some non-land card there. Get that bat down. All right, infantry, make something bigger. Gain a life when it dies off of Panicked Bystander. Cool. And let's just find out if they have removal for the bat. That's a no, so we suit it up as an incredible flyer that's gaining us life. And it should be possible for them to beat if they don't blow it up like immediately. Even if they start hitting their land drops now, they're just going to start playing 4-4s four on the ground and stuff like that in their green-red deck. Yeah, no, this bat just gets there for us. Looks like, and now we have a socialite attacking with evasion as well. Yeah, they're just going to scoop them up. Rough draws for our opponent in that one, but that'll give us our third victory, three and one now. Okay, here we are, round five. Don't love the hand, we're starting off at three mana. We've got a really awkward hand where we have a really defensive card and then a really offensive card, but... Both of our colors, gonna keep it and see what happens here. We did immediately draw into a two mana two two. So we get the ball rolling a little quicker now. Definitely like that we've got that late game grizzly ritual at the ready. Wedding Invitation is a potentially deadly card. Very good card in this format. Two mana when it enters the battlefield, draw a card, so it just immediately replaces itself at very little cost. And then later in the game, they can sacrifice this to make it so any creature can't be blocked until end of turn. If they chose a vampire, that vampire will also gain lifelink. So that can very much get in for that last bit of damage through no matter no matter how many blockers you end up getting. Gonna end up playing Kindly Ancestor instead of Gluttonous Guest here, since it can block this Desperate Farmer well. Blood Tithe Harvester is their play, which they can sack for minus two, minus two right now. They'll need more blood tokens to sacrifice it for more. Mind Leech Cool still seems like a solid attacker to me, so I'll send it in, but keep our kindly ancestor on blocks. And we'll drop our gluttonous guest. I guess we can drop the shield basher here, try to push the aggressive the aggressive position, but this desperate farmer's probably turning into a 4-3 lifelink where we're not really winning that race. So they're probably going to sacrifice Blood Tithe Harvester to flip it. They have that option at least. Yeah, I'll just drop Gladness Gast instead here. I think... Because if I play Erstwald Shield ba or Estwald Shield Basher, it just gives them the perfect target for Blood Tithe Harvester. They just sack the Harvester, kill Shield Basher, flip Desperate Farmer. It's a pretty horrible position for us. Beginning of your upkeep, any opponent may sack a creature if no one does transform it. Yes, that'll just be a 3-3 flyer. Just have to accept that. It's a 5-3 flyer as long as we control a human, though, which is not acceptable. They're just going to immediately get the life gain swing out of the Blood Tithe Harvester here, so unblockable. Get that life. They're back up to 19. Diagraph Scavenger. It's our draw. There's no creatures in Grave for it right now. Get something to trade here. That'd be great, but we can't really. I guess they could trade into our Kindly Ancestor if they double block Desperate Farmer and Traveler onto Kindly Ancestor. I don't think they'll do that, though. We can see. Nope, oh, they're not going to do that. Okay, is the backside of this a human? It is. Wow. I was going to say, we can flip this this turn if we play it and discard a blood token. We'll sacrifice a blood token because then we'll have gained three life this turn. But then I have a... Th I do have a 3-5, but I have a 3-5 human out, which means that this is going to be a 5-3 flyer. And if I play Shield Basher, we also have a human out. Wow, Innocent Traveler is actually just horrible for us.
Oh, I still feel like Shield Basher is really bad here, so I'm going to loot away the Shield Basher. That'll be our third life gain for turn. If we don't get anything better to do, we'll just play Bystander and have a 3-5. And prepare to Grizzly Ritual the Traveler. Okay, now we can imprison the Traveler. So, yeah, we'll drop Bystander and we'll imprison next turn. But now we have a 3-5 that can give itself a death touch. It's a big old death toucher. Really nice attacker or blocker. It's really irritating. Mind rot. Bye, friends. Uh, yeah, that's deal damage. It's kind of a weird choice. If they post combat that, they would hit us for five. But now they just hit us for three. I guess four. Oh, I guess they hit us hard because they're attacking with more creatures. Yeah, that makes sense. I forgot that this card is insane. I forgot you get to do both modes. Buff your whole field and just get a user removal spell. Well, we have to draw into something to win this race. One for blocks all day long, though. Kind of like just doing that. Got our blockers ready. Guess they can always harvester our mind leech ghoul and then their attack with a 4 3 lifelinker. Maybe we just don't attack there. That way, if they wanted to harvest or mine leech goal, we still can double block farmer. But, yeah, I suppose we can just do that next turn. Blood Fountain, that's going to seal the deal. Oh, no, there's only one creature in their grave. But now I can't double block trade because then they just get that back too. Oh, vampires. Only lose one creature when we trade into Harvester. It's probably worth it even though they have Blood Fountain to slow them down. We're at 12. It's not incredible, but it's like the best thing we can do, I think. At our current position of 12 life and no cards in hand. Opponent is sifting through their stuff with their blood token into another blood tithe harvester. Seems good. No attacks. Vampire Slayer's the draw. Oh. Predetermined turn here. You just slam down Slayer and pass. And they'll kill with Blood Tithe Harvester and we're left in the exact same position we were before. But now they can Blood Tithe, uh, Blood Fountain to bring back two Blood Tithe Harvesters if they want. Instead of their farmer, just gonna hold on to these if I get any blood tokens. Here comes the blood fountain. Double harvester it is. We don't have anywhere good to put this at this point in the game. This ancestor is better than anywhere else. I 
We just have to pass, though. Play land in case we get card draw. I probably shouldn't hold two in hand. I'll hold one for bloods, but... If we hit our three mana draw to create a blood token card, we'd actually... We'd definitely end up hitting multiple lands and... Want to have played more than we did earlier. Because that can soak up a lot of our mana and draws enough cards to instantly lead into another play. Which will also cost mana, obviously. Jesus, Falcon Wrath Sovereigns as well. Card is phenomenal. Markov Purifier is an excellent draw. They can just blow it up with their Blood Tithe Harvester next turn, though. And we're taking lethal really quickly. Down to one. They've got a socialite coming up. Six blood tokens to get through any lands, and we've got all lands. It is over. Here we are in game six. Pretty good curve. On the draw again though, so it doesn't matter too much. Not really curving out on the draw. Opponent has Persistent Specimen, Ceremonial Life, another black-red deck here. Drop our Panicked Bystander. And immediately gets Flame Blessed bolted. Fearful Villagers, their next play. Uh, like Kindly Ancestor. Makes the most of our mana here without missing out on a potential ETB like Courier Bat could get if we played it. Blood Hypnotist, so if they get any blood tokens, which they will with that Ceremonial Life, we can start really jamming in. I could double Nurturing Presence or Kindly Ancestor to just start attacking with some insane beef with Lifelink. That's uh, really, really good if they don't immediately bleed dry it. So I'm just going to do that. Attack with a 5-6 Lifelinker here. Trump with Specimen would be my guess, but they could also just take 5 to the face. Either way, I'm gaining 5 life, which is excellent. And now every time I play a single creature, Kindly Ancestor is going to attack as a 4-5. Right, get that Ceremonial Knife onto the Fearful Villager, send that thing in alongside the Blood Hypnotist, no blocks. Specimen's coming in as well. Sure, hit me down to 16. I got plenty of life gain. I'm cool with it. And pass the turn to flip their werewolf. So let's just play Shield Basher so that Ancestor's attacking for four. Then we'll crack our Evolving Wilds. Attack with everybody here. I think we win the race because of how big our lifelink is. And they're down to 9 now. We're back up to 20. Fairly certain we win this race. Even at night time when that werewolf is now a fearsome werewolf. Just gotta blow up our kindly ancestor. Send in the blood hypnotist since it can't block anyway. We'll take 3. 
Rot Tide Gargantua is the play. Exploit the specimen, trade into one of our flyers. And draw into another kindly ancestor. Drop that to buff our ancestor. Um, if I play Courier Bat, I'm not getting the recursion effect, but I'm still getting a 2-2 flyer on the board. They're at 9 life, and now Ancestor will have 7 toughness, which means they have to double block, but it'll only have 6 power, which isn't enough to kill 2 of their creatures anyway. So either way, if I play Courier Bat, Kindly Ancestor trades 1 for 1 with one of their creatures. They'll just double block and I'll pick which one I kill if I play the Courier Bat. So I think I just attack with Ancestor here and then Courier Bat it back to my hand. Although I could also just let it die and then put Lifelink onto Shield Basher, which is also really good. Yeah, no, let's actually just give Shield Basher Indestructible. And, uh, and then throw Lifelink on it when Ancestor dies. Grizzly Ritual, goodbye Shield Basher. Getting hit for three, sure thing. Glennis Guest. Um, we attack both, we can Courier Bat back or Shield Basher. Not gonna play it this turn anyway. Then we get something out of our Courier Bat. Kindly Ancestor's gone, but it's not like it's going to get damage in in the future anyway, so we can just play that back from the graveyard later. Or I guess I could just pick it back up, but no. Go Shield Basher again. And they're so low on life, it's definitely it's just an edict the fact they have to keep sacrificing a creature every turn. All right, nothing to deal with the flyers there, so that is going to close out the game. I guess I should have just been less greedy with Courier Bat and played it earlier. To threaten for lethal in the sky earlier. We'll get there in the end either way. Four and two. Double Nurturing Presence on a lifelinker was sweet. So I definitely like having triple Nurturing Presence in this deck with... Uh, a couple Markov Purifiers, a couple Kindly Ancestors. That definitely seems like those cards can pair together quite well. All right, Infantry, Presence, Ancestor, Snapkeep, we're on the play this time, which means we actually get to make really good use of our of our curve here and just get aggressive. Yes, we have double Nurturing Presence as our turn four play to hit really hard again with a Kindly Ancestor as well, potentially. This could be huge for us playing against a green-red deck. They'll start with a Dawnheart Disciple. Snap off for that trade. I don't want to take the trade. We'll drop our kindly ancestor. Get ready for double nurturing presence next turn. Spore crawler from our opponent. Double nurturing presence is going to leave it at four plus two. Six toughness, they can't kill it, so we do that. And this is the Nurturing Presence deck today. Good lord, they're down to 13, we're up to 25. Raid on the Kindly Ancestor. Unfortunately, our opponent had not immediate removal for the Ancestor. They had to let it get one attack off, but they did have removal for it. The turn after. Why is it so bright yellow? 
Okay, there it goes. Alright, Donhard Disciples coming in. Sure thing. Come in, friend. All lands. Give one of our things lifelink. If I do that, I don't get to do anything with Courier Bad in the future. Because our one creature in Grave is gone. But I don't have any lifelink in Grave anyway. I think I just keep aggressive here. This might be bad. I'm just going to keep the beat down on. Cool, now we... Oh, I was going to say, cool, now we can throw Droxel Infantry onto whatever flyer is still alive next turn. Hit harder in the sky. We're down to nine. I would like to close out this game quickly enough. I'm just dropping Courier Bat. I don't think we're going to end up in a position anytime soon where we have a creature in Grave for it. Because if we do, it's going to be an infantry that we can just cast as an aura anyway. Just get that out there. Hit for four in the sky from now on. If that was the plan, maybe I should have just went Courier Bat with an Ancestor's Embrace on it post-combat. Instead of gaining one life this turn, start gaining two life every turn in the future. It does make the bat a little bit of a lightning rod for removal, though. Lightning Wolf from our opponent. Big stuff on the ground still. My Leech Ghoul is the draw. They only have two cards in hand. So I could sack the infantry and just hit harder in the sky. Yeah. I put my opponent down a card by doing this. I don't think I would sack Drog Skull Infantry if I had a card that just said you can sacrifice a creature if you want, but since I'm exiling a card from their hand, also, it is probably worth it. Get this, uh, get this aura down now. Hit really hard in the sky. Make it a two-turn clock. Instead of a three-turn clock. Yeah. Even if they kill our biggest flyer, they're dead in the sky next turn now. And they scoop them up. That's gonna be... Four and two, I believe. Five and two it is. All right. Really solid run out of this deck, no matter what happens. 650 gems in one pack. 750 to play, so we're only down 100 gems. And of course, keeping all the cards we drafted. Pretty good deal. Here we are in round eight. Bit of a slower hand again, and we're on the draw. But both of our colors and some solidly powerful cards. Pretty easy keep here. Vile Spawn Spider immediately turned two from our opponent. Pretty excellent start on the play here. Get that self-mill going on, which is the green-blue strategy. Weaver Blossoms. Really excellent curve on the play from our opponent. This could be... Very problematic very quickly. At least we have a 2-3 lifelinker to block all their 2-3 attackers. But now not only is our opponent on the play, so they're playing 4 mana cards before we are. They have a mana dork, so they're playing 5 mana cards while we're playing our 3 drops. Ooh, Crawling Infestation. That card is very good with a Vile Spawn Spider on board. Beginning of the upkeep, they can build two cards. Whenever one or more creatures are put into a graveyard from anywhere during your turn, create a 1-1 one, one insect. Do it only once each turn, but that will very consistently happen if they have Vile Spawn and the Infestation. They already have a creature in Grave, so I could just play Diagraph Scavenger here. And I'm cool with that. Uses our mana pretty well. And we get to start attacking with Diagraph Scavenger. That's probably one of the best attackers we could get against a bunch of 2-3s, a bunch of high toughness creatures. Because they'll need to block it with two creatures to kill it. And if they do, I get to kill both the creatures because Death Touch. So I kill a 2-3 and a 1-1 Insect. And then if it dies, we can just Courier Bat it back if we gained any life that turn. 
So Skywarp Scab and Dreadlight Monstrosity in the Grave really hitting the creatures that they need. So Vile Spawn Spider can already sacrifice for two 1-1s. One I don't think it'll be very long before that spider becomes very explosive. It could be very bad for us. Our opponent might just be planning on making like 20 one ones to beat us because they're definitely getting one every turn with Crawling Infestation. Oh my god, double Vile Spawn Spider. We hit a bleed dry, we can get rid of one of them. Send in the scavenger. Guess I get to get rid of both vile spawn spiders here if I let Diagraph Scavenger die, and I'm kind of okay with that, because I can trump attack with Ancestor in a future turn. I don't know though. I mean, this is balmy enough. It's already three one ones. It's gonna be an entire board of one ones really soon. I should just kill this thing. I, I say that, and then our opponent's just gonna ramp into a hole breaker horror with this Weaver of Blossoms or something like that. They have three vile spawn spiders. What was their draft? Oh my god, that's so cool. Our opponent is actually the self mill dream. Three vile spawns? Oh, and now the mold graph millipedes are just not gonna stop coming. Woo! Well, it's a good thing we can courier bat our diagraph scavenger, because we're gonna need a death toucher for that millipede. And then we're gonna probably want to draw more courier bats. Love the no block. Love the no block for us there. Opponent expects some kind of uh, combat trick, but really we're just trying to get our Courier Bat to work. Now we get a Trump Blocker, Mind Leech Ghoul. I want to make them lose a card in hand, sacking our Ancestor. Probably not worth it. They're stuck on mana, so we'll hit an actual card, and it's exiled, not discarded, so... You know what? Sure. And then maybe if they don't kill our Courier Bat, we'll have a Life Linking Flyer. In the future... All right, not bad. Get rid of a repository scab. Not bad. Probably worth that sacrifice because we get a little value having an ancestor in grave and we got rid of a repository scab. Well, Glorious Sunrise is bad. They get to draw an extra card each turn or they can give their whole field plus one plus one trample to the end of turn or they can gain three life, whatever they need. They're down to 14 cards in their library, though. So drawing extra cards might start getting a little bit risky for them. I'd rather Diagraph Scavenger right now to be able to block Millipede than um, then give our Courier Bat lifelink right now. Actually attack with Mind Leech Ghoul 2. We're at 18. If they kill Diagraph Scavenger, we take... 9, 12. If they kill Scavenger and give the field plus one, plus one. That's not that bad. Still be at 6. They'd be completely tapped out. Alright, trade's gonna go here. It is gonna happen. They don't have anything to give Indestructible. But that'll give them an Insect with Crawling Infestation. And another Millipede is the play. Come on, planes off the top. Dang, another white source would have been really good here so we can give our Courier Bat lifelink and still play another creature. I guess I could point a discussion, see if I hit a planes. If I do, I can only play one land this turn anyway, though, so. But I'd still have played two cards, a point of discussion, then whatever white card I want to play. This is probably worth it. Didn't hit a white source, so. Awkward. I think we play a Nurturing Presence here. Try to get this kill in the sky faster. Trump Lock with a Mind Leech Ghoul, unless they give Trample. If they give Trample, then all right, you got us. We're taking some damage here. But we've seen in other games how quickly a double Nurturing Presence can stack up into lethal. So if they can't get rid of Courier Bat or get a Reach Creature, 
they're more than likely just straight dead next turn because we're going to play Nurturing Presence with another blocker, well, with another creature, so they're going to get plus four, plus four on Courier Bat. We hit for six there, hit for one with the Spirit. Yeah, they're straight dead next turn if they can't kill one of our creatures. All right, here comes the Trample. Big swing it is. Stop two damage with Mind Leech Ghoul, I guess, and we can actually kill an Insect, but we're not killing Millipede, and we're stopping the exact same amount of damage. So we might as well stop the damage that also kills a creature. And now we just cross our fingers and hope this all resolves, and if so, we win. And if not, we lose. I guess I could have put it on the spirit token. Spread things out. But I can only play one more card here. It's probably our safest bet to play the lifelinking potential blocker. Although, if I want to play around Syncopate, I play Drog Skull Infantry instead, because they can do blue and then three for a Syncopate. So I can pay for a Syncopate on Infantry. I can't pay for Syncopate on Purifier. And if their card in hand is Syncopate, if Drog Skull Infantry resolves, we just win. We just win. And if it's not Syncopate, if Purifier resolves, we probably still just lose if it's like removal. Because plus one plus one trample, they probably still kill us with the board. Because they're at seven, we gain two, stop three with the toughness. Yeah, I think infantry is probably the best play. It plays around syncopate. Sure, we die to like a bleed dry. We would die to a bleed dry either way. Or we die to wash away either way. Because so we need to play another creature here. And we don't have another white source, even if I discard a card and draw a two-mana creature. I only have one two-mana black creature, which is Mind Leech Ghoul. I could draw into a bunch of white one-mana creatures, but I don't have the mana for them with how I drew. So we're dead on board. That's just going to end it. Yeah, and I guess I could have went discard it to a blood token and try to cast Armaments, but then Armaments gets countered too. We lose that way as well. We try to cast Purifier, they counter Purifier with Wash Away, we lose that way. Yeah. We had no line to victory. I think I probably went for the best one. I was probably just try infantry there. But Glorious Sunrise is gonna smash us to death. Just to miniature overrun every single turn till we are dead. And we are dead now. Unfortunate. Real close in the end. Two life we got them to. I'll resolve it all, take all the damage. And five and three will be our end record in this Crimson Vow draft. Get glorious sunrise. Okay, so we'll take a final look at our deck real quick here. Overall, happy with the dra how the draft went again, but drafting with bots is so awkward sometimes. Feels like we just opened really weird cards or the bots decided to draft really weirdly. Went for the immediate Markov Purifier. Maybe got a little too attached to that, but I chose some solid blue cards um, when we weren't seeing a lot of white and black. And then we just got a pick five. We got a pick five Markov Purifier, which is about as clear of a signal as you can get to go for the white black life gain deck. Started going for it. Didn't see a lot of the really, really good cards until the last pack. The last pack really helped solidify the deck. Most of the deck is pretty solid, but a few of the cards really dragged it behind. A few of the more filler creatures and stuff. Estwald Shield Basher was pretty horrible in most of the hands when we drew it. Um, pretty much everything that I didn't set aside over here, though, played quite well. Except for, like, Grizzly Ritual. If these four cards, if we got some on-color bomb, just any powerful white or black rare in this format, because there's so many bombs, if we got... Wedding Announcement, Henrika Domnathi, Katilda, I mean, the list goes on and on, Soren, Welcoming Vampire, any of that kind of stuff uh, to put in here, and then maybe one more Bleed Dry here, 
and then we just have two of the filler cards instead of the four. I think this deck would be like cream of the crop stuff, be a very, very good run. But we didn't open up that kind of stuff. Got sort of cut on our colors and sort of not in that every good card, most of the good cards in our colors that we saw were wheeling around the packs. We just didn't see a lot of good cards in our colors, which means I think they just weren't open, weren't opening a lot of good cards in our colors. Um, looking back very early in the draft at the best cards I was seeing in a lot of the packs, maybe red blue was the most open at the very start of the draft. Could have had a solid red blue deck, but I think we still ended up with quite a good white black deck, just a little bit below the top of the curve. Again, super bomb heavy format, not having a bomb is automatically putting you kind of out of the seven win average deck. Um, so, and our removal isn't the greatest. So pretty happy with a 5-3 with this deck. That's pretty solid. I'll take it. So that is going to end today's video. As always, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, like make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to let the YouTube algorithm know to send you some more of these videos in your recommended feed. And I will see you all again very soon for some more Magic Arena.